Okay, I put a little dab of glue in the hole where the dowel goes. Another dab of glue on the top where the cut is. I'll squeeze that down and into its place. Drill a couple holes where the nails go. Set them. Now, before I put this last piece of nosing in place, I'd like to show you what its traditional use was. I've dovetailed the bottom of this baluster, and traditionally, the tread was notched to receive this dovetail. Then the nosing covered the notch and the dovetail. Nowadays, the nosing is more decorative than functional. It's pretty common these days to put a dowel in the end of our balusters. Then we drill a hole in the tread, and the dowel seats in the hole. The layout of the balusters is really quite simple. The front face of the first baluster for each tread is even with the riser. So the front face for the second baluster is centered between these two risers. I just measure back from that front face mark half the distance of my baluster and in 3 8 which is centered over the skirt board and is the center line of my balustrade. I'm using a half inch bit to drill out the dowel holes and I've stuck on a piece of tape as a depth gauge. The dowels are birch. One inch is inserted into a hole in the end of the baluster and one inch into the tread. Put it in place even with my front edge mark and with my level I'll hold it plumb. Make a mark even with the bottom of the railing and then I'll add a little extra so it can be housed in the underside. And that's where I'll cut. Just right. Well, two down, nine to go. Well, that's the last of the balusters. The only piece left this little filler block, it's beveled on both ends, fits between the balusters up in this groove. It'll lock the balusters in place. A couple finish nails to hold it. You might want to note that we have two different lengths of balusters. The pair for each step starts at the tread, comes up, but the back one has to go further to meet the railing. The chamfers are also a different length. They start at the bottom, even with the next step up and rise. The back one is longer. This gives us a nice step motion for the bottom of our chamfers and makes the top chamfers parallel with the railing. Yeah, that's good. I've just put this piece of cold molding in place. The far end of this front piece butts into the skirt board. We have a miter here at this corner. Now on the back end of this little piece, I've shaped the same profile that we have on the front here. You might remember that I told you to hold the skirt board down so the treads would rest on the carriage. And that leaves a crack here. This cold molding gives us a chance to cover it. After I finish this cold molding, about the only woodworking left to do would be maybe to put a piece of trim here where the skirt board meets the sheetrock, or maybe a piece of trim here where this skirt board meets the sheetrock. After that, I'll plug the screw holes, fill the nail holes and any cracks I might have left, give it a good finished sanding, and maybe a couple coats of varnish. Now, although you've seen this stairway take an hour or less on this tape, it would take me a week or two from start to finish. Now I know your house will have its own special shaped stairway, and whether you choose the simpler one, like our straight run, or a more complicated one like this L-shaped one, the principles I've shown you will still work. Don't be afraid to give it a try.